everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Ed's Attention to Detail. So today we're going to be putting a new rotor and new brake pads on the front of 2014 Chevrolet Impala. So the new rotor, it has uh, oil on it. Uh, of course, you know, they have these things sitting on a shelf somewhere, so they put the oil on it so that they don't rust. So first thing you need to do is get a good parts cleaner, degreaser, and knock the oil off of it, which is what I'm doing here. Because oil, oil and brakes don't go together. Uh, they don't work. So anyway, knock the oil off of it. I'm just going to set it to the side for now. And we're going to take these uh, lug, lug nuts loose. Okay, um, so you guys might have noticed I'm kneeling on cardboard too. Um, it's nice to have something to kneel on if you're going to be doing a job like this. Uh, it just makes it a little bit more comfortable. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the brake caliper off. Okay, and it is held on with two screws. These are 14 millimeter and one here. Might help by loosen it instead of tightening it. That one's loose, and there's one down here. That one's loose. And believe it or not, these two little bolts hold the brake caliper on the car. So, pretty good engineering if you ask me. Now, you should be able to just slide the brake caliper off. And you guys see, you can see that this piston is pushed out quite a ways all right now I'm gonna push that piston back in in a few minutes and I'll show you the difference between what it is here and what it's when it's retracted fully um, brake pads got my new ones there's the old ones now they you might have to fight them a little bit to get them off but they should come off pretty easy. And here's the difference between the new and the old. All right, hopefully you can see that. You see how wore out, how thin that is, and how thick that is? Um, we've got 160,000 miles on this car. So we, we got our life out of these brake pads. Another thing to pay attention to when you take this apart is this little piece right here all right this is a squeal indicator and what it's designed to do is when your pads wear down now this one hasn't touched yet but it'll it'll normally touch the rotor when the pads wear completely out um, and it'll make a noise it'll squeal and that's why they call it a squeal indicator but you need to pay attention to where that that's on the inside top on this car so when you put the new brake pad back on you want to make sure that it goes inside top okay so that's the difference between these two is you have that squeal indicator on one the other one you don't okay so now this is the one that I'm thinking is probably fully worn out completely worn out yep you see that right there you see there is no pad left that's metal to metal. All right. That's what was making the horrendous noise. And that's what wore this brake rotor out. Again, see the difference? It's supposed to have a pad, no pad. Now, you might be asking, how come one side wore out and the squeal indicator didn't touch on the other side? It's not highly unusual to have wear, uneven wear on, on two different sides of a brake pad. It's not highly unusual. Um, so it's just one of those things that happens. Now, 
did the caliper not slide back and forth like it was supposed to? Very possible. So I'm just going to check things out and clean stuff and make sure that that caliper can slide. But uh, that's usually what happens to cause that. Um, and that right there just cost us between the pads and the rotor. That's uh, what, what have we spent? $115, $120 now. So the rotor itself was uh, $65. So you want to keep an eye on those things. I failed to do that. I trusted somebody else's word, actually. Um, like I said, we just got new tires put on, and I asked them a couple weeks ago, how'd the brakes look? And they told me they looked fine. They cost me a rope, really, as far as I'm concerned. This is where the screw that mounts the caliper screws into this little piece right here. All right, and you see where it moves in and out? That allows the caliper to slide back and forth, and that's what's supposed to keep that caliper centered so that you don't have that problem. A little bit sticky, so I'm just going to lube it up a little bit, clean it, lube it up. But uh, they're not terrible. I don't think it's really that that big of an issue uh, issue for uh, concern anyway. So now, right now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this caliper frame or mount off so that I can get the rotor off the car. Now this is I'm using a three-quarter inch uh, six-point socket okay so I was trying to tighten those a minute ago I had my ratchet set the wrong way so now I'm taking the bolts off for this caliper mount and it's just two of them once you break them loose uh, they, they're pretty tight but once you get them broke loose they come out by hand it, uh, it, these are coming out by hand. I sh I'm not going to say the jurors will come out by hand because they may or may not. But anyway, so all right. So now I got that out. Um, and the reason why I took this off is it makes it easier. And these get replaced too. These just hold the uh, the brake pads onto this caliper frame and keep them from jiggling around, bouncing around, making noise. Um, but yeah, these things, they just, they just clip on. There we go. So they're, they're really not held on with anything. It's just clipped. But um, so that's pretty much all the disassembly. Now to take this rotor off, I got a star bit right there. So I, I actually got to go get my tool. I forgot to get the tool for that. Again, preparation makes things a whole lot easier. But I'm going to turn the wheels back straight, and then I'm going to try and get that bolt out of there, and then I should be able to pull this rotor off. Okay, guys, so this took a T30 torque bit to pull that screw out. Now, off camera, I went ahead and broke it loose. So it's not supposed to be that loose. If it is, um, you might want to retorque it. But that bolt right there is all that should be holding this brake rotor on. Now, maybe I misled you with that statement right there. But uh, with the brake rotor on here and the wheel on and the lug nuts, all of that holds it on. So, like I said, that, that one little screw right there, that just keeps it from falling off when the tire's off. So... Now we got a really nice paperweight. Um, so, gonna reverse the process here. Take the new brake rotor, line up the hole for the screw that I just took out. Make sure you put it on the right way there. And then get your screw. Now it is really important that when you're tightening the screw down that you make sure that you have the rotor completely flat against the hub because if you don't your rotor is going to wobble as you're driving 
and you're gonna end up doing that to your new brake pads. So just make sure that it's nice and flat, tighten the screw down. You don't have to um, try and strip the screw out while you're tightening it, but make sure it's snugged up really good. And since I'm using a torque driver, I'm just going to assist with these channel locks by making sure that that's a little bit tighter. So that should be good. Um, looks better already, don't it? So uh, I told you that I was going to push that piston back in. Now, you can do that a couple of different ways. They actually make a tool to, uh, it's called a spreader that you can put in there. But I'm just going to use a C-clamp. I've got an old brake pad. I'm going to lay it across the piston. And we're going to put that C-clamp on the back side of the caliper. And on the old brake pad. And we're just going to slowly, very slowly, all right, you should have a little bit of resistance as you're pushing this uh, caliper piston back in, but it shouldn't be really hard to do, all right? So if it's really hard, something's wrong, and you need to stop because you could damage your caliper, uh, you could damage your master cylinder, but uh, this one's going in just fine, nice and smooth. Is only taking a little bit of pressure. Now you might hear the impact in the back. Uh, that's because we decided to open up a tire service today, apparently. Um, <laughs> but no, my son's over here rotating the tires on my truck for me. Good to have good help. So anyway, uh, I just about got that piston pushed all the way back in now. Take the old pad out. Now, if you remember what I showed you earlier, that piston was stuck way out here. And now you see that it's almost flush with the housing. Okay, so that's fully retracted. One thing to keep in mind, however, is you're pushing the fluid that's behind this piston, you're pushing it back through the brake lines and back into the master cylinder. If your master cylinder is completely full, you might overflow the master cylinder. So make sure the cap is loose, give it a little bit of room to expand that fluid if it needs to, but um, mine I didn't have to do that, I checked it earlier. So uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and turn the wheel back this way so I can start assembling things. Now, the one main reason why I keep turning the wheel is it just makes it a little bit easier to reach everything. Um, you don't have to do that, but like I said, it just makes it a little bit easier, in my opinion. So that's why I do it. So you may or may not, that's up to you. All right. Now they provide new clips with these brake pads. These are supposed to be premium ceramic pads. So uh, they, have, they have different levels of brake pads that you can put on. Um, Ceramics is supposed to be the higher level. It's a higher performance brake pad. So it's up to you how much money you want to spend on this. These were $45, I think. And they had a $55 ceramic pair that really had no difference except for this little plate right here came with a $55 set. Ain't nothing wrong with this. This is just an anti-rattle uh, plate that'll go on the back of the pad. I didn't see paying a 10, 10 extra dollars for something that I really don't need. But that's up to you. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna start putting them on. Now, these clips will go in. And I remember how they came out, so. But they'll really only go in one way. So. And they should be snug enough to stay on without falling off, but they're not going to be extremely tight. Once you get the brake pad installed, that's what's really going to hold these, these little uh, devices, whatever you want to call them. That's what's really going to hold those in place. 
All right, so we have the uh, these clips. I don't want to keep calling them clips. Let me see what they call them. Uh, <laughs> they call them clips. <laughs> All right, well, so these clips are installed on the caliper frame. If you remember, when I took the old pad off, I said inboard and up for the squeal detector or squeal maker, whatever you want to call that. And this piece was on the inboard pad, so we're going to put it back on the inboard pad. And it's got little notches cut in it for these little divots on the pad itself, on the, uh, the back of the. So you just want to make sure that it fits down there. It should be nice and flat and flush. So, um, and that's going to go on the inboard side. So we can go ahead and put it in here. And these clips actually help hold everything in place until you can get it on the car. So that's kind of the nice thing about these clips is in a few of these places you need three, four sets of hands. And of course, we're not equipped that way. So, next best thing is to use a clip. I guess. Anyway. Uh, now, another thing that I really haven't talked about, uh, just something to be aware of. This is kind of a dirty job. So, make sure you ain't wearing your Sunday best white shirt out here trying to do this because you will get it well it won't be your Sunday best after that I'm pretty sure so anyway. show it all right now I've got these pads see how I've got them centered up inside the frame the clips holding it together and we're just going to slide this onto the car just like that And what you want to make sure of is that your brake pads are on either side of the rotor. So I got one on the inboard side, one on the outboard side. We can put our bolts, put our bolts back in that we took out earlier. All you have to do is just line this thing up and these bolts, well, they're just like these. They don't. They're not threaded all the way to the end, so they're kind of self-centering when you put them in the hole. Get them in there. Um, now, there are torque specifications on each one of these bolts, and I looked them up earlier. If you don't know where to find the torque specifications for your vehicle. First place to try is your owner's manual, and I know that it has torque specifications for your lug nuts. Now for this, it may not, um, so you'll have to go to a maintenance manual, or you can look it up online. Uh, I'm sure you could probably go to a uh, GM dealer, and they should be more than happy to tell you what the torque's gonna be. So, I'll make sure that I'm tightening. We're going to go ahead and snug these bolts down. got my torque wrench set and uh, it is actually at 82.5 foot pounds so I'm gonna go ahead and torque those bolts what do you find it what if it's somebody like me who, who don't have the money for a dealer I need to know what I'm looking at on the tool now this is a click type torque wrench of course, you might have heard it click, but and the only reason I have this torque wrench is because I use it at work. So 
Um, I'm not telling you to go out and buy a torque wrench just so you can change your tires because that's completely uh, a, a waste of money to do that. But this torque wrench is set in foot pounds and it's 80. There's a line for 80 right there. It's probably hard to see, but then there's another line that says 2.5. So you line it up vertically and that tells me I'm at 82.5 foot pounds. So, but yeah, this is, if you was to buy a torque wrench like this, it's probably going to run you somewhere in the neighborhood of three to four hundred, maybe even more dollars. So, like I said, this is not an expenditure that you need to make just so that you can do um, brakes. Bad gummit, this pad came out. So I got to put it back in. Sometimes you run into little issues, and I have run into a little issue here. So bear with me for a moment. I try to get this ironed out. Like I said, these clips are nice, but they can be a little bit of a headache too. Um, but anyway, I've got the pads back in. They're actually sitting flush against the rotor on the inside and the outside. So I am ready to put my caliper back on. And the caliper should just slide right over the top of it, just like that. Oh, that's, I couldn't ask for better. Now, we got the two bolts that hold the caliper in. Let's get them started. millimeter wrench. Let's tighten those down. And they don't have to be super tight, but just want to make sure that they ain't gonna fall out. And again, there is probably a torque specification on that one, but I didn't look it up. Um, I'm pretty confident that tight is good, but for your own safety, make sure that you torque them to the correct value, okay? Don't do what I did. Or if you do what you do, what I did, that's on you. Don't hold me liable for it. Anyway, that's rotor, pads. Only thing we got left to do is put the tire back on. So I'm gonna straighten the wheel back out. We'll get the tire on. So you guys might have already figured out if you can hear her. I haven't listened to the audio yet, but Ernie is off camera and she asked a question. What if you have to bleed your brakes? Um, brake bleeding is actually pretty simple, but unless you have a tool to help you bleed, you'll, you'll put a tool up on the master cylinder and it'll press the fluid through there. Unless you have that, you have to have a second person to help you bleed. And that second person is gonna push on the brake pedal. But, your bleed is right here on the front of the caliper. So I'm gonna show you a close up of that real quick. It's got a little rubber cap on it, but you see that shiny? That's your brake bleeder, all right? So you put a wrench on that and you just crack it open and fluid will shoot out of it as the pedal is being pressed down. If there's any air trapped inside the line, the air is also gonna come out there. So as somebody's pushing the brake pedal down, you open it up, fluid comes out, as soon as the fluid stops, you shut it, you, you close it. And then you tell them, pump up the brake. If you don't pump the brake a couple times, open it back up, fluid will shoot back out. If there's any air in it, the air is gonna come out with the fluid, and that is how you bleed a brake. You're supposed to bleed from the, the wheel that's farthest away from the master zone. You bleed it first, and then you bleed the next closest or next furthest one 
and you work your way all the way back until you get to the closest one. So that's the concept of bleeding. But there are tons of videos out there. There's uh, maintenance manuals, everything else, so you can look it up um, if that's something that you want to tackle. But uh, I do not recommend it for somebody that has never done it unless you have some experience that you can rely on, someone you can, you know, they can watch you, maybe coach you. So, but anyway, there again, that's your call. Um, but that's how you bleed uh, brakes if you needed to. All right, let's get the wheel. Ugh. That's it. Brakes, rotors on a 2014 Chevy, Chevrolet Impala. Um, maybe you learned something. I know that I learned that I got to keep a better eye on my brake pads because uh, this cost me a little bit of money and it shouldn't have. But that's all I got. Uh, I'm going to clean up my mess, but I'm going to do that off camera. So take care. God bless. Remember, pay attention to the details. See you again soon. Bye.